Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're talking about the fast of the fifth month. All right, the fast of the fifth month. The fast of the fifth month. Turns out there are actually four fasts, and we're going to briefly mention the other three. But this class is particularly about the fast of the fifth month because this date is actually coming up soon. Right. Mm -hmm. It actually falls on August the 19th in the year 2021. Right. And so we wanted to hurry up and get this class out talking about fasting and we also want to talk about the prophecies around these days. Right. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking in the book of Daniel. We'll be looking um, in the book of Jeremiah when we talk about the prophecies. And we'll start off talking about the fasting where we'll touch on Isaiah and the shepherd of Hermas. And Lord willing, we'll even mention your tea company. Sounds good. We'll see how that all works out. You know, we're still kind of new at all of that stuff. But anyway, we're looking over here in Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 19. If you would read that. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month and the fast of the fifth and the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feast. Therefore, love the truth and peace. So this verse is a little bit strange because it's talking about fasting and it's also talking about joy mm -hmm. and it's telling us that these fast days will be days of joy in the future yeah because usually when we think of fast we think of um being in a solemn state yeah. um being you know afflicting your soul yeah, kind of withdrawn deal. away from people and things like that yeah yeah and matter of fact let's jump over there and let's look at that we said we were going to talk about fasting and there's a lot of people who are asking about fasting so what we want to do now is look at some verses on fasting to maybe give people an idea of what a true fast looks like yeah, because um, it's different than what we have grown up and have been taught to believe. Yeah, we were always taught that abstaining from food was a true fast. And the only fast. And the only fast. But turns out that, that kind of fast, even though it's beneficial for your body right. and maybe even your mind, it does nothing for your spirit and or your righteousness. Yeah. And we're going to learn that here. Matter of fact, let's go over to Isaiah chapter 58. Okay. Now here we're looking at uh, verses 6 and 7 out of Isaiah chapter 58. This whole chapter is about fasting where the our father is kind of um, chastising us on our improper way of fasting. Like he was just saying a few minutes ago, um, we were fasting wrong. Mm -hmm. We read and learn here in Isaiah 58. In all of the Bible, this may be the only verses that tells us about fasting. Yeah, and we're not saying that the um, that you cannot fast, do a fast. Um, well, we're not saying that abstaining from food is wrong, but we are saying that there is a more beneficial fast that um, the Father desires for us to um, perform. Well, let's read about it. Let's, if you would, read verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? See, like we were saying, this chapter here is all about fasting, and it's correcting us in our way of fasting. And if you read the previous five verses, he talks about the old way or the incorrect way that we've learned to fast. Mm -hmm. And so now in verse six, he's telling us what his fast, what a proper fast, what he expects a fast to look like. And he says is uh, what loosen the bands of the wicked to undo the heavy burdens yeah, and then let the oppressed go free. So it's kind of looking out for the underdog sounds like, yeah, the father always brings it back to love and these are what the ways that we can show love to others so a fast has something to do with love mm -hmm. not so much as our personal self but love towards our brother right reverse seven is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house when thou seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh so this is what it means to afflict your soul 
Yeah. You know, you're in a very haughty position when you think you have everything you need and you don't have to worry about nothing. Nobody can, you know, nobody needs to do anything for you and therefore you don't need to do anything for anybody else. But when you actually stop and try to help the needy, it humbles you. Yeah, it seems like what this here from verse 6 and 7 is saying that a fast is all about helping others, not just yourself. That's right. That's right. Doing stuff for others. And we were looking for an opportunity to talk about your tea company, and that's kind of what it's all about, right? Yeah, the tea company focuses on um, the wellness of the spirit as well as the body. But, you know, our main goal was to put an emphasis on... Um, just wellness for the spirit. Okay, so so as a way of helping your brother, you're not only educating them on these herbs that can be used to heal and treat certain ailments, right? But you're also helping provide them with those herbs. Yeah, mm -hmm. shipping them to them right to their door. Yeah. But we'll talk about that a little more as we go. Okay. Now, if we can, let's jump over to the book of Hermes. Uh, similitudes and let's look at chapter 5 out of the Shepherd of Hermes similitudes which is talking about fasting okay now this entire chapter is about fasting this whole similitude is about Hermes being educated on what a proper fast looks like but we're going to drop down and just look at a few verses here and we'll start at verse 28 if you would read that this fast said he while thus doeth also observe the commandments of the Lord is exceedingly good. Therefore, thus shall thou keep it. Now, you remember this story, right? Okay. This is Hermes, and he was on his way to perform a fast. Mm -hmm. And the shepherd said, uh, what are you doing? Right. Mm -hmm. hey, what do you think you're doing? You're not doing this right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Hermes was like, well, this is what I've been taught. Yes. And now we see in verse 28 that the shepherd is actually about to correct Hermes on what a true fast looks like. Right. And we see what right here that he says this fast includes the observance of the commandments. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you would, read verse 29. First of all, take heed to thyself and keep thyself from every wicked act and from every filthy word and from every hurtful desire and purify thy mind from all the vanity of this present world. If thou shalt observe these things, this fast shall be right. Now, so this is why we wanted to do this class. Like we said, we are fasting. As, a, as humanity, we have learned to fast incorrectly. Yes. Right? But we're learning here, like we learned in Isaiah 58, what the Father expects of us as a fast. Mm -hmm. And we see that it's not only keeping the commandments, but it says here that we perform no wicked act, mm -hmm. say no wicked word, mm -hmm. do no hurtful deed. Even go on to purify our minds and, you know, so it's a lot to do with this fast. Yeah. And notice that it is not saying, um, notice that all of these things are beneficial to our spirit man, not necessarily to our body. Right. And so that is what the father's fast, I guess we will call it. That is what he focuses on our spirit. Yeah. Our spirit. Whereas the other fast was focusing more on our bodies, abstaining mm -hmm. from food. It, like we said, mentioned at the beginning, it does have benefits. Right, it I mean, does. I always yeah. think of the 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 wild leopard, or you know, the panther, or whatever. The hungrier he gets, the sharper his skills get. The right. more focused his mind is, you know, he's he's really at the top of his game when he's a little bit hungry. Yes. And humans are the same way. We think better, you know. Sometimes, you know, get too yeah. hungry and you can't think at all. But it's so. Abstaining from food does have physical benefits, but like you said, these this fast, this true fast, is our Father teaching us to fast spiritually. Yeah, because we know that our bodies um, matter not really. I mean, they do they do matter because that's the tool that the Father that the Spirit uses to get the work done. But when it comes down to um, who we really who are, who we really are. We are spirit. Yeah, yeah, spirit. Our bodies eventually will go in a hole or yes. to the dust or whatever. Yeah. But our spirit lives forever. Yeah. And so that's, I believe, what you wanted to almost say was our father's primary focus is on our spirit and not so much our body. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 when you think about it, his focus is on our spirit. That's what he works to protect. But he's given us a body as a motive force. So it's really up to us to take care of our body. 
He takes care of our spirit. We need to take care of our body. Yeah, and once again, we're going to plug the T. That, that is what, you know, we focus on with the T's. Um, the T is there to um, bring wellness to your body, but it, it, it is the spirit that the Father connects with to do the healing. Well, you know, he put all of those trees and plants and herbs and stuff down here for our healing. Yes. And so when we realize that him as our creator and our father has provided these this vegetation for our healing, you know, I believe it, it does provide a spiritual connection, realizing that, you know, he is mm -hmm. taking care of us and yeah. he's take, he, he's provided us with what we need to take care of our bodies. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it turns out many of these herbs and stuff that are growing wild in our yard, we cut them down with our lawnmower, are the same herbs that the doctors and the pharmacists are using to make our medicine out of. They are. Yeah, mm -hmm. so in a way, with the efforts that you're doing and, and what you're doing in your tea shop, you, it's kind of like going directly to the farm. Yeah. It's kind of like getting your herbs direct, well, it is getting your herbs directly from the farm because you're out there picking them yourself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and drying them and stuff yeah but anyway let's look at the next verse verse 30 thus therefore do having performed what is before written that day on which thou fastest thou shalt taste nothing at all but bread and water and computing the quantity of food which thou art want to eat upon other days, thou shalt lay aside the expense which thou shouldest have made that day, and give it unto the widow, the fatherless, and the poor. So here it is, he's telling us just to eat bread and water, right. instead of abstaining from all food, like we've been talking about. Um, the true fast is not really a fast about abstaining from all food, as it is abstaining from maybe luxurious foods or tasty foods delicacies or delicacies yeah. you remember what daniel was saying when he was on a fast he said he drank no wine and he ate no meat or something like that mm -hmm. but he was eating bread and drinking water right mm -hmm. so another thing that this verse points out is that we're supposed to um take the expense that we would have spent and use it to help and support others. Yeah, so you, you often think about the person, the professional who you know has to spend all of his day away from home, maybe eating three, four meals, including snacks, you know, away from home. So you think about it. He may be spending ten dollars on breakfast, fifteen dollars on lunch, and twenty dollars on dinner. Right. With maybe an extra five dollars in snacks and sodas and stuff, that equals about fifty dollars a day. Yeah. So on this particular day. If you were to do this, what he's saying here, instead of planning to go to the restaurants that day, you will stop by the grocery store and get a loaf of bread and a big jug of water. Yeah. That's going to cost you what? Maybe $5, $6. So at 5 or $6, and you take the other $45 that you would have normally spent and give it to the widow or the homeless. Yeah. I mean, it just falls in line with scripture and it falls in line with what the father is about. I think I think what he's doing here is actually giving us like a minimum thing. This is easy, easy yeah. thing you can do. It is. Yeah, it you is. ain't got to put forth no whole lot of effort. You ain't got to, you know, do a whole lot of planning. Yeah. It's like on this one day, the expenses that you would have normally have eaten, you're actually giving them away. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm giving them away to the widows, the fatherless, and the poor. All right, if you would read verse 31. And thus thou shalt perfect the humiliation of thy soul, that he who receives it may satisfy his soul, and his prayer come up to the Lord God for thee. Yeah, and so right here is talking about what we read about in Leviticus 23 when it says, afflict your soul. Yeah, and it also uh, reminds me of um, the Third Testament where it talks about how to really worship the Father, and that is by helping others, and they will, well, also the Book of Shepherd of Hermas, where they go out and pray for you, mm -hmm. and um, you've helped them, but now they've helped you as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a key part to this fast, is, you know, in today's environment, we can go a long way as far as helping people if we just, you know, remain in our own homes and pray for them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, especially if we don't have a lot else to offer that those prayers will be stronger 
you know, and we will be able to help a lot of people, you know, and afflict or humiliate our souls at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is what a fast truly looks like. Like you see in verse 32. If therefore thou shalt thus accomplish thy fast as I commanded thee, thy sacrifice shall be acceptable unto the Lord, and thy fast shall be written in his book. So this is kind of going back to Isaiah. Yeah. Where Isaiah was telling us that we was performing a useless fast. Right. It mm -hmm. wasn't doing us any good. And looking at what Isaiah says is basically the same thing that Herman says. And that is that if we perform the fast in this manner, then it will be acceptable unto the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and like we'll say for the last time in summary, this fast is just putting yourself in a position where you are not partaking in the luxuries that you're used to every day. Mm -hmm. Kind of just eating bread and water instead of steak and potatoes. Right. And you are using that extra money to give to the widows, the poor, or the homeless, mm -hmm. or the fatherless. Mm -hmm. And then you're actually doing stuff for people, including prayer for people and any other opportunities that the Lord provides for us to help one another are all included in, in this so-called acceptable fast. Yeah, because you're not only uh, humiliating your soul uh, by just eating bread and water. Yeah. I mean, but you're also helping someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just drinking a lot. Just drinking water will be humiliation for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. That's true. While we're switching gears here, you want to go ahead and tell them the email address to contact you? Yeah. To contact me, um, you can email me at stacy at thebombandtheblend.com or the bomb and the blend at gmail.com. The bomb and the blend at gmail.com. If they want any information or you want to actually start getting something, you may be able to send them something while you build the tea shop. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. Um, I would love to be able to put into your hands some of these herbs that the Father has um, given us. You know, for, for what we believe to share and to help others. So, you guys, if you're interested, just send our email and start a dialogue, um, start a conversation that, you know, you can figure out if there's something that's growing wild on our property that Stacy can send to you to help you out. But anyway, we're back over here at Zechariah chapter 8, which is where we started from. And we are looking at the verse that's talking about the fast of the fourth month, the fifth month the 10th month and the seventh month and in this part of the video what we want to do is look at the prophecies around this day all right the question is is it possible that this 10th day of the fifth month is it possible that that day could be associated with the so-called great awakening or the rapture or whatever you want to call it some of these special end time events that we're waiting for is it possible that we're waiting on August the 19th, 2021, for these events to take place? All right, let's see. Well, first of all, we want to understand what the fast of the fifth month is all about. Mm -hmm. And for that, we could come over to Jeremiah chapter 52 and verse 12. All right. Now, in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which was the 19th day of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon into Jerusalem. So here it is, the 10th day of the fifth month. This is the day that we are remembering when we do the fast of the fifth month. Mm -hmm. And we can see down here in Ezekiel chapter 33 what he actually did on the 10th day of the fifth month. Right. Mm -hmm. If you would, read verse 21. And it came to pass in the 12th year of our captivity, in the 10th month, in the fifth day of the month, that one that had escaped out of Jerusalem came unto me, saying, The city is smitten. So this is what the fast is all about. It was on the tenth day of the fifth month that they actually burned Jerusalem down. Right. They destroyed the walls. They burned down Solomon's temple and carried the people into Babylon. Into captivity. Into right. captivity. Like, absolutely. So this is why we have a fast every year. Mm -hmm. And if we come over here to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 25, we can get information regarding all four of those fasts. 
Alright. You see there in verse 1 it's talking about the 10th month. Mm -hmm. That would have been the day and the month that Nebuchadnezzar took all of the daily sacrifice back into Jerusalem. Right. And then in verse 3 you hear we're talking about the 4th month. Mm -hmm. This would have actually been 11 years later when he started besieging Jerusalem had actually started starving them out and it was in the 4th month when the famine prevailed. Right. When the people were so hungry, they couldn't do anything but give up. And then in verse 8, we hear about the fifth month, mm -hmm. which is like we said, they burned the temple down, like you read about in verse 9 and 10. Right. And then in verse 25, you hear about the seventh month, Okay. which is when it seems like the people are acquiescing to the Babylonian's rule or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all four fasts are mentioned in this one chapter. Okay, well, I have a question. Okay, so... Some might ask, if all of this bad stuff is happening, um, seem like it would be centered more so around us afflicting our bodies, going without food because we're sad, we're grieved, and all this other stuff. Um, seem like it would be more so about that. Yeah, well, I guess that's why you had both. And, you know, even to this day, you have many people who will do a physical fast, abstaining from food um, and, and, you know, in remembrance of this day. Right. But, you know, what we wanted to do, you know, was not take away from, you know, the fast, you know, that, you know, somebody might do to help their physical body. But we wanted to introduce the idea that there is a spiritual type fasting. And that's what the scripture is talking about when it's talking about afflicting your soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can understand how, yes, yeah, somebody would abstain and be, be abstaining from food, or throwing dust on their head and do all this other stuff that, right. you know, that they considered afflicting their soul. But we just wanted to show the scripture. And, you know, other than Isaiah's and the shepherd of Hermas, you're not going to get many more verses or scripture on what a true fast looks like. Well, when you go without food, when you go without um, um, liquids, that is afflicting your body. Yeah. It is not afflicting, afflicting your soul. soul. Yeah, and you that is what the Father needs for us to do. That's what he needs for it. Well, that's what he desires for us to do, to afflict our soul. Yeah, because the, um, the earth will be inherited by the humble. Hmm. So he needs some humble people around or else. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, it's also interesting that all of these events are focused around the temple in Jerusalem. Yeah, that is true. All right. Well, let's bring it over to Daniel and chapter 12 and let's show a prophecy that's related to these days of fasting. Daniel chapter 12. If you would read it, verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that make it desolate set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So this right here is a prophecy from Daniel and or prophecy given to Daniel. And it's talking about the daily sacrifice being taken away. Mm -hmm. And that is what Nebuchadnezzar did when he um, besieged Jerusalem, right? Yes, absolutely. We can see over in Ezekiel chapter 24 verses 1 and 2 that it was in the 10th day of the 10th month that the daily sacrifice was taken away. Mm -hmm. So what Daniel's prophecy is telling us is from that 10th day of the 10th month back there with King and Nebuchadnezzar, there will be 1,290 days until we get the abomination of desolation. Okay. And then from the abomination of desolation, verse 12 says that if we proceed another 1,335 days into the future, we'll get a blessing. Yeah. And we've covered this in many, many classes. Yeah. So we'll spare them the math on this. But what I think is important to this understanding is that we're seeing a connection between these days of fasting and this blessing that we're reading about in verse 12. Mm -hmm. In fact, that blessing is what I think Zechariah was talking about when he was saying that, that these days of fasting would be days of joy, gladness, and cheerful feasts. I agree. Yeah. So when we started off this conversation, we were asking, is it possible that this fast of the fifth month could be somehow tied to the great awakening or the rapture or something like that? Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think when we take all of these verses into account, we understand that the 10th day of the fifth month or the fast of the fifth month is an extremely important time. And it's understandable that so many people focus on this day every year when they're talking about these events that are supposed to take place in the end times. Mm -hmm. So it's very likely that we could see one of these events like a great awakening happen on the 10th of Av. Right. But I have to say that I don't believe that any of those events will happen in the year 2021 only because of the timing of the fast. Mm -hmm. The fast of the 10th month, the events that happened in the 10th month happened before the events that happened in the 5th month. Okay. Let me make sure I'm making sense here. So you have four fasts. Yes. You have the fast in the 4th month, mm -hmm. the 5th month, the seventh month and the tenth month. Yeah. We know that these fasts will become days of joy. Yes. So there is coming a day when the tenth of Av will be a day of joy. Mm -hmm. And when we're looking at Daniel, we can get some timing of when this event will actually take place based on chapter twelve prophecy. Okay. The thing about it, his prophecy is not based on the fast of the fifth month, but it's based on the fast of the tenth month. Mm -hmm. So I believe the fast of the tenth month has to come first. Okay. You have to have some type of fulfillment of the prophecy of Daniel chapter 12 and its relationship to taking away the daily sacrifice has to come before we see something happen in the fourth month, which would be next, and then the fifth month. And then finally in the seventh month. Yeah, I agree. So a long way of saying, do I think that the great awakening or the rapture will happen in the 10th day of Av in the year 2021? I don't think so. I think that's a couple of days from now. That's a couple of days from now. But I think we have at least a year to see the fulfillment of the prophecies related to the fast of the fifth month. Mm. Okay. It's at least a year away. Now, the reason why I say that is because the daily sacrifice was taken away in the year 605 BC. And so when you look at Daniel chapter 12 and you add everything up, it turns out to be the year 2021 AD. So this is why there's a lot of excitement around the 10th day of Av in the year 2021, because it appears as though Daniel's numbers add up to 2021. Mm -hmm. But like we were talking about a few minutes ago, the fast of the 10th month should come before the fast of the 5th month. So it is not the 10th day of the 5th month that we're waiting for. It's actually the 10th day of the 10th month that we're waiting for. Okay. So the 10th of Av 2021 may be just a year too early. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's still important nonetheless. Right. So now we'll just focus on learning how to fast and maybe even doing a dry run in the year 2021, hoping that this dress rehearsal will pay off for us in the year 2022 when the fast of the fifth month becomes days of joy and a cheerful feast. Yeah, preparation. Preparation. That's what it's all about. Many of these holy days are mm -hmm. all about, um, like I said, a dress rehearsal. Right. Mm -hmm. So I know some people are disappointed. Everybody wants everything to happen now, but at least you get the information about the fast out of this video. Yeah. Um, would you say disappointed? Because um, you have time for, to prepare. Uh, you know, a lot of us aren't just aren't ready. We think we are, but... You know, I think it's a good thing that the Father gives us time to prepare for some of the, these things. Well, I think most people don't appreciate that time. They just want everything to happen right now. They don't understand that our spiritual growth takes time. Mm -hmm. And so many people, when they first hear about the Father, the Lord, the Bible, the Scripture, the Rapture, the Great Awakening, they're ready for it to happen today. Yeah. Not understanding that they really need to be focusing on their restitution. Yep. Which fasting goes a long way to paying restitution. Yeah. You know, so. We do believe that we're ready and that let's get it going now. Yeah, everybody but wants to go right now. it takes time. It takes time. It takes time. It takes time and work. To learn how to live within the law. Yes. You think the disciples walked with the Messiah for three and a half years and that's what they were doing. Learning how yeah. to live according to the law. And us. We are in no way, you know, good a shape as the disciples were when they showed up, when, when they started off. So we may need a little more work than they do. Even though we think we are ready. <laughs> Even though we think we are ready. 
Um, so you got the information about the fasting and you also got information about your tea company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to say about that before we close out? Um, I guess I just want to say that, um, you know, we will soon be, um, offering samples. Yeah. I was thinking it'd be a good idea, you know, especially when you're up and trying to get everything established, you know, if you had something like a drying table that you wanted to uh, try to build or another greenhouse or something you would need to collect, harvest, dry and ship all of these tea leaves out. You know, you may do something like a little sample offering, you know, where people can make donations and you send them a, a sample pack. Yeah, I would love to be able to do that. Um, like, a, like I said before, um one of our purposes is just to be able to help the body, you know, of the Messiah, um, because we believe that it's important for our bodies to be well in order for our spirit to do the work that is called um, here to do. I mean, you know, though we would like to say that, you know, we can just go out and do it. We need these bodies and yeah, these bodies have to be moving. They have to be well. And, you know, we all know that when we're sick, we really don't want to be out ministering or helping other people. We just want to be laying around taking care of our own self. And so our bodies have to stay well. Yeah. And these, those are our motive force, um, our tools that our father has provided for us to get his work done that we need to do down here on the earth. Yeah. Know? And we so. believe that by, you know, well, the father tells us that the leaves, the herbs are a medicine. And we just want to help. Yeah. Just want to be able to be a blessing. All right. Well, you guys uh, send Stacy an email so you guys can work together and get it all worked out. Um, how you can receive sample packs or help out her tea shop or whatever is just up and growing. But in the meantime, uh, check out Isaiah chapter 58 and Hermes uh, similar to 5 um, as we prepare for the fast of the fifth month. And it would be interesting for you guys to also let us know if you guys will be um, performing this fast. Yeah, what what would you do uh, or what would you not do as you remember this fast? Leave that in the comments section. And if you have any other questions or anything, put them in the comments section as well. And if you would, go ahead and hit the like button and that subscribe button so you can get classes when we put them out in the future. Mm -hmm. And with that, we want to say shalom. Shalom.